Welcome to Voices of Experience, the official podcast of the National Speakers Association. I'm your host, technology strategist and futurist, Crystal Washington. Are you ready to move your speaking business into the future with greater relevancy? We're all in the midst of shifting, and if we were to be honest, some of our topics and stories are losing relevancy in our extremely fast-changing environment. Luckily, our two guests are masters at helping others innovate. Kate O'Neill will share how we can hone in on where our opportunities lie. Then, Bill Staten will gift us with exercises for unlocking innovation. Let's go. On this segment of Voices of Experience, we have Kate O'Neill with us to talk about finding focus. A little bit about Kate, she was one of the first 100 employees at Netflix, and she built the first intranet at Toshiba. So she knows a little bit about finding focus, especially within and outside of companies. Thanks for joining us, Kate. Thanks for having me. Okay, so I'm so excited to dive right in. You're a technology person like I am, and we talk about finding focus. I know that the way that you look at this might be differently than people who are strictly creative. So how does it serve speakers to hone in on a specific topic area versus staying broad? And and how if you can give us some ways that we can do it. Yeah, I think it, it helps speakers because you can really hone in on what is going to be relevant specifically within your area and mm-hmm. how you can bring value to the audience around that topic. Mm-hmm. So, you, you know, if you're just very broad with what you do or you're all over the place, I feel like you're never going to really get at the core value that you're going to be able to offer. So for me, you know, my, my last book, Tech Humanist, is mm-hmm. really kind of the, the essence of what I do. I speak about technology and its mm-hmm. impact on humanity. Uh, but for me, it's even more specific specific than that, but there are several areas within it. And, and the way I think that people can go about doing that, I actually have a, a method I'll, I'll share I'm with looking, you. I'm looking, you have a Venn diagram yeah. in front of you right now. <laughs> I love Venn diagrams. <laughs> I so see. You must too. I, I do too. Yeah. I love mapping of all types. <laughs> so if anyone out there is not a, um, a fan of or even know what Venn diagrams are, if you've ever seen the kind of overlapping circles mm-hmm. types of diagrams, that's what we're talking about. And I'll get into it. Actually, if that's okay, I'll jump yes, right into yes. it. So if you were to draw, and and maybe you should, if you have the opportunity now in front of you, to draw three circles Mm -hmm. that all overlap a little bit, Okay. what I would ask you to then do is in each of these circles, write the following. In one circle, write, what is your unique experience or credibility? Mm -hmm. And I think credibility is a really important differentiator here. You know, what's your unique experience is where I think a lot of us tend to go. Mm -hmm. But credibility is so important, obviously, in the speaking business. And then in the second circle, uh, at the bottom maybe, Right. What do people pay to learn? Mm. And I think, obviously, we need to understand where there's a viable market for the skills we're talking about right. and how that overlaps with what we have experience and credibility in. Because there's a lot of speakers that have experience and credibility in things. And they're like, I'm going to take the world by storm. Yeah. And their topic is something that absolutely no one in the market is paying for. Exactly. And that's really hard. It's hard to be in that situation when right. you're really passionate about something, mm-hmm. but you just can't find the people who are willing to pay. Right. Uh, and you can probably get creative about how you get paid for things like that. Mm -hmm. But it's easier if you can find that uh, that overlap with what people are already paying to learn. Okay. And then in that third circle, and this is where I feel uh, this this is the differentiator for me and what makes this work for me, is that third circle is what are you endlessly curious and passionate about? Mm. And for me, what that brings about is how are you going to stay up on what all of the new trends are in your space and Mm -hmm. whatever, what all the research is and what everybody needs. And even then, now that you've got those three circles labeled, Mm -hmm. what's really powerful about that is to understand the the relationship between them. So the relationship between your unique experience and credibility and what you're endlessly curious and passionate about is content ideas. You can be writing blog posts. You can be doing videos. You can Mm. be writing guest articles that are in journals and magazines. You can be getting in front of your audience with what you're curious and passionate about that you have experience and credibility in. And where experience and credibility overlaps with what people pay to learn, Mm -hmm. that's event themes. That's where you got to be looking in the market for where the conferences are and how you can actually go and find the events that are going to hire you and going to pay you Mm. to bring your expertise and your credibility to their audience. What I love about this exercise is that even the most seasoned speaker, so someone that's new obviously is like, oh my gosh, this, this is perfect. But even if you are seasoned, 
you can redo this every year, every two years, and it's going to keep you refreshed in the market because it's going to make you refocus. Absolutely, and I do this every few years. I think this mm. is a really important refocusing exercise because sometimes it shifts a little. Sometimes right. you know what you are really into at that moment has evolved yes. over the last year or two. You know, there's new trends in the market. There's mm -hmm. new things that you need to know about, and sometimes you care more about those than what you cared about two or three or five years ago. And the last overlap to mention is the overlap between between what people pay to learn and what you are endlessly curious and passionate about are media hooks. So that's where if you have an opportunity to have a TV interview or a podcast interview or something like that, that's going to give you a great opportunity to talk about the things that people are really interested in along with you and want to know what, you know, what, how you bring an expert focus to that. And so where that those three circles overlap, that is your X factor. Mm. When you really hone in on what you bring uniquely mm. to the marketplace and how you have credibility and what you're going to be constantly researching and, and knowing the most about mm. and offering value to people who are paying to learn, mm. that's your X factor. And for me, that's that tech humanism, the future of tech-driven you know, human experience. Right. I, I'm really excited and passionate and credible about that. But it's going to be something completely different for every speaker, or it should be. Right. And that's where I think we, you know, we end up creating the most value in the marketplace is when we have those unique offerings that we can really uh, enrich the marketplace with. This is a really powerful exercise. I hope that everyone that's listening is going to take advantage of this and do it now. Like pause the podcast for a minute, grab a sheet of paper and, and get on this thing. Now, you mentioned where certain areas overlap. That's your media. Others, it's your content. You know, once you have a specific topic, how do you create a media plan? That's a great uh, question, and it's one that I feel like um, once I have an understanding of what my theme is there, and so for me, the media hook is human-computer interaction, mm. just in general. So there's, uh, you know, any number of of areas that. Uh, the media wants to know about. For, I, last year, for example, I had a really big media moment with mm -hmm. the 10-year challenge. Mm -hmm. You know, this, the trend that everybody was sharing a 10-year-old photo of themselves alongside a current photo, and I had a, a tweet that <laughs> went viral saying, "Way, well, you know, this is this could be mined for d uh, data to yes. train facial recognition." Yes, I, I remember that. Yeah. I was like, "Kate is everywhere." <laughs> yeah, and, 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 did. and with a really great, poignant observation. Thanks. And what I tried to do is is take that media moment and mm -hmm. parlay it into you know. Can we talk about something that's a little bigger than this moment too? Mm -hmm. You know, can we take you know the opportunity to you know ride this current moment and mm -hmm. say, hey, you know, maybe we as people should be being a little more savvy and sophisticated about what we share online, and really just thinking a little further about how it can be used in ways that we didn't intend it for. Mm -hmm. So I was trying to broaden the message, and I think that's where we really get the opportunity with a media plan. Mm -hmm. We have to be responsive okay. to what you know the media needs, what's what's currently uh, trending. Right. Versus what we just want to talk about. Yeah. Because I know sometimes people are like, oh, press releases. I'm just going to send a press release because my new topic <laughs> is blah, blah, blah. But it sounds like you're saying, no, you're taking what people are already talking about, applying your insights, expertise, your X factor, and then flipping that as an expert? Yes, yes. Okay. And I feel like there's another there's another Venn diagram that you could draw oh. with, <laughs> of two overlapping circles. If you are in a media situation mm -hmm. where what the media, what the journalist or you know media outlet wants to talk about mm -hmm. may pull in one direction. Right. But what you want to talk about pulls in sort of a different direction. Right. And you're looking for the natural overlap of those two things. Yes. And maybe you want to gently pull it in the direction of what you want to talk about. But you have to be sa savvy and sophisticated about the fact that they're going to want to pull it in a more sensational direction right. or you know, how, whatever is going to get them the clicks and the, the views. Right? I, have a, I have a shock jock that I remember the first time he tried to interview me, it was one of those gotcha things where he's trying to make me say something mean. And I and it's similar to what you said, so I gave him a little of what he wanted in terms of the content, but I was like, but, and I turned into a Care Bear. And he was like, but doesn't it make you mad when I was like, Care Bear answer. But, but really good content. <laughs> and from that point on, they kept calling me and he would just say, this is our nice guest, Crystal Watt. So it's, it's similar to what you're saying where you can give them enough. Yeah but still kind of pull in the direction you need to. So I love that. Yeah, and then you get to be the nice guest. You get to be yeah. the one that they call with. Oh, well, we need a nice person perspective. Yeah, Let's that, get Crystal that on. Was, I don't want to be angry on the radio. I'm not judging anyone else, but I, 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 yeah. So last <laughs> question for you. You also talked about content and how we had an overlapping area for developing content. Mm -hmm. Can you share just maybe two to three tactics for developing a content plan? 
Yeah, sure. So I think once you understand what your, I, I, I should back up and say one of the other elements to this is the overarching purpose that you have. What what are you trying to to do as a mission mm-hmm. in your work? Mm-hmm. You know, there there probably should be something like that. It shouldn't just be like, well, I want to I want to talk on a stage, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and mm-hmm. this is what I can talk about. For me, I really genuinely want to help humanity prepare for an increasingly tech driven future. Right. I think we're not prepared for what the the future is bringing us in terms of machine driven experience. Agreed. Yeah. So that's a real genuine purpose for me. And that also will drive my content plan. I want to hit different elements of that within what I write about, talk about, you know, whatever, blog about, okay. create videos about. So the impact of tech on humans is the the nugget of the content. Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to want to flesh that out across a lot of different facets. I'm okay. going to want to think about, you know, how this is meeting people mm-hmm. in their lives and how can, can we talk about self-driving cars? Can we talk about algorithm, algorithmic bias? Can mm-hmm. we talk about all the different things that people are concerned about? But obviously I want to think about what my audiences care about, right? Like mm. the audiences I'm actually speaking to when I speak on stage so that the humans that are in the audience. <laughs> Ta-da, tech humanist, yeah. I see you. Yeah, <laughs> um, but also of course the event planners that, mm. you know, I want to make sure that I'm hitting the topics that they know are hot. So the future of jobs and future right. of work, that's a really big topic Huge, right now. Yes. So I want to make sure I'm blogging about those things and, you know, doing videos about those things too. And there's going to be a different area for everybody, obviously. But I think that's what we need to be doing in our business is thinking about what are the hot topics? What are the things that we can uniquely bring credibility to? And how can we develop a rich content plan that lets us hit all different nuances from different angles of those topics and make sure we're covering it really richly so that we offer a lot of value. You may have new topic and talk ideas or even new strategy on attracting media opportunities. Now, let's dig a little deeper and find ways we can flip our own normal way of thinking upside down. On this segment of Voices of Experience, we have Bill Staten, who will be talking to us about unlocking innovation. Now, we like to introduce all of our guests with a number. Not only is Bill the co-chair of the upcoming NSA Influence Conference, but in addition to that, his number is 29 Emmy Awards. Additionally, he's a CSP and a CPAE. In other words, he is all the things we want to be. Thanks so much for joining us, Bill. Thanks, Crystal. I Never mind. That's fine. <laughs> fine. Let's dive right in, shall Let's we? Let's do that. All right. So, we're talking about unlocking innovation. This is something that you preach. It comes out of your pores. You obviously live it with True. your awards and experiences. With relevancy, a goal for speakers who want to pay their bills, because mm-hmm. typically we don't want to live in tents. How can speakers better embrace innovation in their brand and their programs? Well, there's all kinds of ways to do it, um, uh, innovation. And, and so much of it is just a mindset. So, I mean, it doesn't take much more effort to be innovative. It just takes being conscious of being innovative, trying something just a little bit different. It's, you know, when you think of innovation, everybody thinks innovation, oh my goodness, I've got to be Leonardo da Vinci or you know Steve Jobs or something like that. So, no, there's, they're little and big. There's all kinds, all sizes of, of innovation. Uh, many think, things that uh, other NSA speakers talk about on the main stage, you, you, a presentation that, that you did, you gave all kinds of ways to be more innovative when you reach out to a, to a, to a client, when you have that, that initial call with the mm-hmm. committee or something like that. So all, all kinds of things to do, but again, so much of it just comes up to a mindset of how can I be a little different from everybody else? Mm-hmm. So one of the first things to do is figure out, and it's not that tough to figure out, what is everybody else going to be doing? Okay. And then what can I do that's going to stand out a little bit more? It's not, again, it's not rocket science. It's, okay. it's not that difficult. Okay. So it sounds like oftentimes you find that we overthink it or try to do too much, and what you're saying is just the little tweaks that makes the difference? Yeah, little tweaks can make a huge difference. Okay, okay. So can you share a quick process or activity we can use to refresh our talks or even expand our thinking on new ones? Yeah, here's here's kind of a fun one. Back when I was writing jokes, I, I used to write jokes for my own TV show that I did, plus I wrote jokes for The Tonight Show. And what I would do to kind of spur my creativity and occasionally come up with a great joke is... I take the newspaper, you know, the actual, an actual physical newspaper. Okay. And most of us, you know, live our lives either in airplanes or hotels. Right. Well, hotels, you go to the front desk and they've got the Wall Street Journal. They've yes. got the USA Today. 
just grab it and grab two different sections. Okay. Or grab a section from USA Today, a section from Wall Street Journal, whatever they have there, the local paper. Okay. And find two articles that have nothing whatsoever to do with each other. Okay. And don't stop until you find a, some kind of a common denominator, some kind of an intersection. Interesting. Because it forces your brain to what I call connect dots, which is the, the, the root of innovation. Okay. It forces your brain to find connections that aren't really there. And then you want to kind of turbocharge this. Take that morning's paper. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're the morning speaker. You're speaking sometime that day. Okay. Go down, get that morning's paper. Get the physical newspaper. You, you know you're scaring me. I'm a millennial, so I'm thinking a I know, physical here's, here's, newspaper? Yeah, 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 but this is why. This is why you want the physical newspaper. Okay. You go, and, you, and your job is, I will not go on stage until I find something in today's paper that I can relate to my topic. Oh, I love that. So you do that, and if it's something in their industry, that's great, but it doesn't have to be. It could be something from the sports section, the mm. entertainment section. Don't just go to the business session, section necessarily. But you're going to find something that relates to your topic. And here's why you want the physical newspaper, because at that time during your program, mm -hmm. you're going to pull out. I don't know if any of you saw this morning's Wall Street ah. Journal. I mean, because it's, it's kind of like the proof. Because pulling like out this, the app, like putting up your phone doesn't mean anything. It's not, it doesn't it, translate. It doesn't mean anything. It's, but here's mm. the actual, it's, it's a tactical, physical, like a, a, yeah, a tactile, physical thing. Right. So I don't know if you saw in this morning's Wall Street Journal, there was an article that said, and I, I will go to it because I'll have highlighted it. And, you know, and here's, here's what they said, blah, blah, blah. Okay, that's exactly what we're talking. You see how they did this? And all of a sudden, it, it, it makes you seem... Um, completely current, because right. it's literally today's paper. Right. Um, it makes it seem customized, because even if it's not about their industry, it's custom, it's happened today. Mm. This is not, clearly this is not a stock part of your presentation. Now, it might be a stock part of your presentation, where you know that every single time I give a presentation, when I get to this part, mm -hmm. This is where this is my placeholder for something from today's oh, paper. So you're making it modular almost. You're so you, it can modular. Just, you can exactly. insert it in. Yeah, exactly. That's brilliant. Insert something from today's paper. Okay. Oh my gosh. Okay, so you gave us a great activity and so now I know that when I'm trying to update my programs, rather than my normal way of just staring at my Prezi screen and drinking, I should actually take two papers and relate things that aren't related just to kind of get the synapses. Right, but keep the drinking. Keep the drinking keep while the drinking. I'm doing it. Exactly. I can do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are there any tools you suggest we consider for brainstorming or collaboration? Yeah, um, and it's a free tool that everybody has. It's called your brain. And, what, <laughs> and all I want, all I want people to do is I want, I want everybody to kind of make a habit of asking these two questions as you go through life. Okay. If you see two things that are completely different. Mm -hmm. Let's say in the morning you drive past a farm and there's a cow. Okay, great. In the afternoon you go to a rock concert, or the afternoon. <laughs> that's, All that's right. It's a really lame rock concert, isn't well, it? Well, but after you've been drinking, you I know, maybe true. it still that's works. True. But <laughs> teach yourself to ask the question, how is this like this? Okay. Like, again, we talked about it earlier, because, again, your brain will try and answer any question you put to it. Mm. So if you say, is this like this, your brain will say, nope. You know, time for a drink. But if you say, how is this like this? That's just kind of a mental exercise to get your brain into that, get your brain used to, oh, we're doing this. We're being creative now. We're being innovative. That's all, that's all there is to innovation. Right. Is finding connections. And then the second thing is anytime you encounter what I call one of these weird dots, mm -hmm. no matter what it is, get into the habit of asking yourself the question, how can I relate this to my business? So if you're in the doctor's office waiting for a physical and you're reading a 40-year-old uh, uh, issue of Good Housekeeping magazine, okay, somebody there, and you're reading some article because there's just nothing else to do and the Wi-Fi is terrible, right? There, you're reading the article and you think this is really boring, boring. Okay, make force your brain to ask the question. Ooh, how can I relate something in here to my business, and then come up with an answer because your, your your brain will start working on it, mm -hmm. and you may actually come up with something really, really cool. Um, or, or how can I relate this to my topic? Right. And again, it may have something because so I speak on innovation. I read about innovation. Well, that's 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 the low hanging fruit. That's the easy stuff. But if I read a you know a magazine article on Amish quilting, oh. and say, oh, how can I relate this to innovation? Actually, wow. I, actually, that's a fairly easy one. But but you do that and you go like, oh, that's a cool example. Mm -hmm. And that's probably an example that you know my competitors Josh Lakner Stephen Shapiro people like that they're probably not using they're that not because they may that. not have they may not have a subscription to Amish quilting magazine like you do exactly of course well I, I do come from Amish country actually Lancaster Pennsylvania awesome so, yeah more, the so, more we know about you yeah. there we go so that's that's just a really cool technique to try and encounter as many different dots as you can when you go when you go to the grocery store mm -hmm. they have a magazine stand sometimes you miss it because isn't everything online it is 
uh, buy a magazine about a topic that you have no interest in whatsoever. Ooh. And just make this, just it's just a thought experiment. I'm going to find something in here that I can relate to my topic, my talk, my clients. I'm going to find something in here mm. because it's something they won't have heard before because they are not, they're not looking at that magazine. They're, they're reading everything. You know, they're, they're reading Wire. They're reading Fast Company. They're reading the Wall Street Journal. They've heard all that kind of stuff. Right. This is the stuff they won't have heard of. Remember, Bill is one half of the brilliant minds in charge of influence. If you haven't already signed up for influence this August 1st through 4th in Washington, D.C., you can get more information and sign up today for the annual conference of the National Speakers Association. Simply visit nsaspeaker.org forward slash attend forward slash influence 20. Thank you for tuning in to Voices of Experience, the podcast of the National Speakers Association. Catch us on your favorite podcast app, YouTube, and NSA's social media profiles. I'll see you next week.